Hi, in this video we will take some examples to understand why the controllers like PID are working in practice. Uh, in a way, uh, even if we do not model very rigorously why the PID models are working and is giving a Jugar kind of a way. All right. So let me first uh, introduce you to a particular biological uh, example where controller design is actually used in modeling or understanding the behavior uh, more uh, understanding the behavior in a better way. So this is uh, the example of our retina which has uh, cones and horizontal cells and you must have noticed that when the light falls on your eyes your brain takes certain actions in order to uh, increase the pup increase or decrease these cones in order to uh, make sure that light entering into your brain is 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 an adequate amount all the time so ev even when when the light is less or illumination is less then one has to to consider that okay we are still be able to uh, to see the uh, uh, see the environment even uh, similar to what what the uh, similar to what even if it is illuminated and this is one reason that you are able to see even in the dark so what is the phenomena here is that these cones are primary receptors sim stimulated by the light and these cones are then stimulate the horizontal cells and these horizontal cells provide negative feedback to the cones in order to um, to make sure that these light which is entering into the into, into your brain is less or, or the adequate or it has a particular set point that has been set uh, for a uh, for individual person this way of understanding gives that okay um, this is how the negative feedback is working but what kind of controller this is. Since uh, if I consider modeling it as a proportional controller, I can, I can explain certain answers. But as compared to the P controller, if I consider a PD controller, it is giving more rapid response and at the same time less offset in the uh, set point adjustment and so on. So this way PD control fits better as compared to the just applying the proportional control in this case. So what we have now if we model this cone and horizontal cell um, uh, phenomena as a negative feedback what we get some signal flow graph, signal flow graph something like this that I have a set point for the uh, elimination set and this is the output that, that I should be getting it. In this same case this particular cone is also a first order system whereas this horizontal cell is also a first order system with different time constants. So if I design a controller, so if I, uh, if I put them into a feedback loop instead of any other structural form, it turns out that this particular form is nothing but gives you a PD control kind of a structure. You can, you can work out the uh, transfer function between the output y and the input ysp and you will see that the response is turning out to be similar to the, the, uh, the transfer function turns out to be the, the process which is cones and the, the uh, PD control. And it turns out that the response is of course overshooting but it gives a faster response as compared to reaching to the uh, reaching to a particular step input values. For a particular um, K, T, C and T, H this is what turns out to be my um, typical response uh, of the retina uh, cone or, or cone photoreceptors in retina. What is more, more exciting to understand here is that the PD control way of understanding the behavior helps us in understanding whether my feedback is working or not. If my certain cells nerves are not working properly what will happen is my, my signal feedback which is 
uh, which is this particular, which is represented by this link is not working properly. Means my sensing is not correct. If my horizontal cell is not behaving properly, my response is going to be slower, which happens with the aging. And so we can say that this gain and this particular time constant of the PD control is not behaving, is kind of uh, sacrificed and accordingly medication can be given. If my cone itself or the process plant dynamics has changed because of aging or because of certain things, one can see that the transfer function itself has changed. So what kind of response can you expect? And since we have bifurcated the problem in terms of giving the process and the feedback form, one can look forward for identifying many different problems that can, can occur because of the feedback and because of the control uh, characterization and so on. All right, so this, this is why um, at times this understanding of the PD control and its behavior helps us in, in modeling the, um, the natural behaviors and identifying the problems, uh, possible problems then. If we have the um, simplified models such as the first order model, so these are certain other examples uh, of first order model and the second order model. We had seen last in, in the last video that if I am having a true first order model or a true uh, second order model, then I should be able to apply PI control or PID control and so on and so forth. So which are those first order models? These are typically if I want the uh, mass, storage of mass, momentum and energy is captured in terms of a one variable, then it becomes a first order model. Certain examples are velocity of a car on a road angular velocity of the rotatory system, level in a tank or concentration in a volume with good mixing. Whereas as compared to the same methodology for a particular system, my control objective is um, represented, a control objective is position of a car as compared to velocity. Then I need to represent the storage of mass, momentum and energy captured in two variables. Similarly, stabilization of stiff satellites or level in two connected tanks becomes the problem of second order, second order modeling, a problem associated with the second order model and uh, one can resort to an appropriate PID structure. Giving an, another example uh, of designing integral control in a very simplistic manner. Now integral control, we know that um, it is possible to, uh, it, it is more effective when we have to apply it on the faster dynamical systems. So for such systems, for example, my transfer function is a simple um, first order system and its gain is given by constant k which is nothing but g at um, the transfer function at s is equal to 0. So the loop transfer function of this under integral control can be given by k times ki times uh, divided by s because my integral control is ki by s and that gives me uh, loop transfer function as k ki by s. The corresponding closed loop characteristic equation is given by s plus ki equals 0. All right. So now if my, if I want to place uh, the, uh, the behavior of the system such that my desired time constant should be equal to TCL or the closed loop time constant should be equal to uh, the TCL value, then what we are considering here is the trans, the characteristic equation as 1 plus STCL equals 0 or 1 by, um, or, or when we consider here 1 by TCL equals k times ki here. Therefore, we can say that my ki should be equal to 1 by tcl times k and k is now replaced by g of 0. Okay. So now the integral gain is fixed at the desired 
uh, time constant uh, times the uh, transfer function with the uh, static gain and so on. So this kind of integral time designing the integral time constru control is valid if my, my time constant of the closed loop system is much higher than the gain k. All right. So now when we have systems which are not represented by just a constant gain, then I can represent, I can apply the same, same methodology for the system with some other higher order terms. So g of s then is this particular gain is then approximated by the first order, uh, first order approximation of the Taylor series expansion. So now this becomes g of 0 plus s times g prime of 0 which is the, uh, the um, derivative of transfer function g of s with respect to s at s is equal to 0. And therefore my loop gain, my L of s is now can be given by ki g prime of 0 and this is what is nothing but the, the appropriate uh, form that we are writing in terms of this. Now here it gives you, uh, so what, what we will consider here is that this ki times g prime of 0 is set to 0.5, minus 0.5 because that is going to give you the loop gain, this is this is setting up as a constant value which is nothing but a little lesser value as compared to what is happening at s. So this shifts the, this adds the bias and this should, this bias should be approximately the half of what we are, we are considering as the changes into it. And that is the reason we will set this to 0.5, of course normalized values of, normalized 0.5 value. So this gives me the condition for setting up the ki which is equal to minus 1 by 2 g prime of 0 from this particular bias formula. Whereas if my uh, time constant for the closed loop is selected as TCL then it gives you minus 2 by uh, 2 g prime by g of 0 at s is equal to 0. All right, let us apply this particular integral control on a wonderful example of atomic force microscopy. Now this atomic force microscopy is um, used for measurements, imaging and manipulation and this particular um, system is 1000 times better than the optical diffraction limit. And why is this better? You will appreciate it because of the controller design and the way the controller design has been or the system has been designed to use, utilize the controller options. Now one has to look forward for resolution at the resolution at the uh, atomic scale. So that is what the uh, microscope is designed for. So this uses the control through a piezo element and that controls the vertical position of the cantilever beam. Let us understand this through this particular diagram. For example, your sample is placed, so here the sample is placed on the piezo drive and this piezo drive is, is driven by a sweep generator which is uh, rotate, which is turn, which is moving this, this particular sample in x and y directions. At the same time, there is a controller which is, which is changing the z position of the piezo drive depending upon what the sample um, depth is at an atomic level. And how is that measured? This is, there is a cantilever here sitting here and which has a tip sitting at the sample. If there is a, a deviation in the depth, then this cantilever shifts and the photodiode or laser and a photodiode captures that deviation. Now the objective of the controller is to maintain this, this particular deviation at 0. So we will try to maintain this piezo sample drive at a particular height at a microatomic level. If there is a small deviation in this, we will adjust this z in order to or the height of this, this sample such that the deviation is small, deviation is almost 0. Now this controller that makes sure that this particular height is adjusted 
the recordings of this particular Z input is helping us to map the atomic level disturbances into the sample. Now understanding this working is fairly okay. Now what should I design as the controller for it? Okay, let us understand that. So there are multiple modes for the A AFM. We will look into a tapping mode operation which is dominated by the cantilever. One has to, what is this tapping mode? When the sample is moving in x, y direction, this particular uh, cantilever is tapping onto the atomic, uh, uh, onto this, this particular samples. Otherwise, this will, this will not be, this does not stay here and then you, you, you know you are able to move it. So, this tapping mode is uh, dominated by the cantilever vibrations of the system. And this vibrations then can be averaged out be, with the can be modeled with the help of a spring mass uh, method which is which is shown here. Now this uh, system is having a low damping all right. So the amplitude of these vibrations decay by e power minus zeta omega n and therefore my transfer function can be approximated as a first order system where a by which is given by a by s plus a and A is given by zeta by zeta omega naught. At the same time, this is averaging over the uh, averaging process because it is averaging over the vibrations that has happened and that gets recorded in the, uh, in the Z variations and so on. Now this averaging process and this low damping part combined together gives you the transfer function of the system which is given by A by S tau, tau is given by 2 pi n by omega naught where the omega naught is the fundamental frequency at which these vibrations are, are occurring. So given this kind of character transfer function, what we have is that uh, we will use some kind of a control in order to get this z. Now why are we choosing integral control in this case? We are choosing integral control because this is a very fast process with high noise levels. We see that even vibrations are attached to it. At the same time, we, we want this particular tapping also should happen rigorously and so on and so forth. And at the same time, process is dominated by the dead time. When we model it, here we see that there is an e power of minus s e power of minus s tau term coming up. It means it is a lag dominated system, and also it has higher order system with all time constants of the same magnitude. So we can't say that this a, a, there exists a particular dominant pole over here. So in such way, in such a case, I'm resorting to the integral control, and the integral control design we have already seen with the help of g of 0 which is which is which was the simplest way of designing the internal control. In this case my g of 0 at s is equal to 0 is equal to 1 and uh, the first derivative of g with respect to s and s is equal to 0 gives you this and with with a proper substitution we get the integral control gain given by a by 2 plus 8 tau, eight tau all right. With this, we get when we plot the uh, plot the Bode, Bode plot, we get a fairly enough, fairly good uh, stability margins, which shows that the design is 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 appropriate. What we have gained out of this is, first of all, the um, idea behind how the atomic measure, atomic level measurements have to happen, with the help of the control design. Now the second level was the which controller to apply and only integral controller ha control has given an answer to us to a cert satisfactory extent it was amazing to look at and, and, and that is the simpler way of designing the integral control has given the jugar for the atomic uh, frequency uh, the AFM measurements to uh, uh, sorry um, atomic force. Uh, microscope in coming into the market. That is all for this video.
will these uh, set of examples are available in this particular uh, reference. We will take a look at another example of, uh, of an un unmanned uh, aerial vehicle in the next video. Thank you.